You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, y'all, it's Wild Out Wednesday. Joining us this week is uh, J. Anthony Brown. Let me tell you about something about his late ass. <laughs> y'all, J. Anthony Brown, let me tell y'all something. J. Anthony Brown sent me a... Go ahead and pull him up. Y'all, J. Anthony Brown sent me a text months ago. Hey, man, want to come on your show? Y'all, we had... Y'all, we had J. booked. We had J. booked and everything. He did answer the damn phone. That was about three months ago. Man, my book of Jackie was so hot. She's like, what in the world? I was like, mm-mm, put him in a penalty box. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, he like, okay, I'm ready to come on last week. I'm like, <laughs> like, was a Negro in quarantine for three months? <laughs> I don't see Roland. Where is he? No, no, no. Here's the problem. We're on FaceTime, and so what happens oh, is what we're, we're, we're running the FaceTime through our control room so you can't see me, but you can hear me. So pretend, I can hear you. So pretend you're on the damn radio. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so how you been handling this COVID-19 stuff, man? Man, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm staying away from uh, regular people that I used to hang out with. They can't come around no more, man. I, I'm quarantined, and I'm at that. I, I got everything already. <laughs> so I don't need to catch none. You know, I got high blood pressure, diabetes. I just got over cancer. So you got to stay away from me. You can't come around me at all. <laughs> at all. At all. <laughs> so so when I'm, folks say... I'm mailing my vote in. When I vote, I'm going <laughs> to mail it in. <laughs> you know, and that's the way I'm doing it. I'm doing it that way. And when I do go out, I'm all masked up. I got on a hazmat suit right now. <laughs> Just to talk to you. Just talk to you. <laughs> How you doing, man? Man, you doing? man, I'm good. We just sitting here, man, uh, having fun. The show is going great. I'm proud of you, man, by stepping out there on your own and putting your own show together. And, I'm, you know, I be telling people all the time, the Internet has changed the game. You don't have to wait for these big markets and these radio markets and these TV markets for you to put your products out there. If that's what you want to do, get you a camera, get you a mic, or just get you an iPhone and go to work. That's all you got to do. Now, it's so simple now. now let, me so tell, simple. let me tell y'all something. If y'all think I'm a gadget freak, <laughs> y'all ain't, y'all, there is no gadget known. J. Anthony Brown got more gadgets than me. I know y'all think I'm lying. No, you, I got, in fact, Roland, check this out. I just produced a show that's on, that's on YouTube. It's called I Got a Gadget. So you sent us one of your gadgets and you were on the show. And anybody out there who has a gadget, go to I Got a Gadget. I love gadgets. Gadgets make you sane, man. They really, they're a peace of mind. You can't wait. I will order anything that's on television. Put it on television, especially after 12 o'clock at night. I'm going to order it. I got to have it. I got to see how it works. I want it. Uh, yeah, You're I, the same way. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, y'all, I'm not <laughs> lying. Y'all, we, we, we were on Tom Joyner cruise. <laughs> And I opened up yeah, my... We would swap gadgets. We would, I, you got this and I got this. I, op that was I, I opened up my gear bag. <laughs> I swear J. Anthony Brown thought the tree of life was in it. He was like, woo! He got excited. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is now. I've always, I've always been that way. What about yourself? Have you always been that way or what? Yeah, well... Yeah, but but now see, and the difference is we now got money. So yes. see, before we would just stare at gadgets. See, now we yes. can actually yes. buy gadgets. Now I can buy gadgets, and, and and I don't mind buying gadgets that when you get it, sometimes it don't work. You take a chance with a gadget. Sometimes it ain't gonna work the way it works on television. You know, like this is a piece of crap. Okay, you <laughs> bought it. That's what it is. So, so you have to take that chance with a gadget, or it looks. Big on television, and when you get it, it ain't that big. Not, you know what I mean? That's part of buying a gadget. That's part of it. Uh, well, That's the way it works. Well, and see, the advantage that I have is that I can buy gadgets, and it's all a tax write-off. 
<laughs> That's what I've been doing too. Thank you, for, thank you very much. If it don't work, I'm writing it off. Let me tell you the latest gadget I bought. Uh-oh. The latest gadget I bought. They have a box. This is a box. This is a box that you buy. Say you're going to give somebody a gift. You want to give them a computer. Well, you take this box, and the box said it's a it's a fart plug, and so it looks like they got a gift for fart plugs. The real gift is inside the box. <laughs> So when they open it up, you get to watch their expression of you giving them a ready ass gift. You know what I mean? That's the gift. That's the new gadget I got. But it's all on my show on YouTube. I got a gadget. So thank you, man, for sending in the tape. Thank do you, do thank you, you thank literally you. look for like? Do you just? I, I bet you remember the old Sky Mall magazine used to be on the airplane. Yes. I, I know they knew you personally. That. Along with that, and like I said, anything that comes on television after 12 o'clock at night, <laughs> I got to have it. I got all the pots. I got 15 ways you can slice a potato if you come to my house, man. <laughs> I, got all, I got all of that. I got, I got all of that. I got the water hole that, that winds up by itself. I got the scarves. I got the ice tr- I got all of it. I got it all. I got it. I got it, yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm telling y'all, I, you, J. Anthony Brown, y'all, y'all think, y'all really think I'm lying. J. Anthony Brown could probably open the Gadget Museum. You know what? They used to have a store in some of the malls called, as seen on television. I got all of that stuff. I got all of it. When they buy, they put it out there. I gotta have it. I bet, I, I, I bet you had stock in the Sharper Image. <laughs> Remember Sharper Image? <laughs> oh my God, that was the store. And, and here's the here's weird part, only before I had money, I could just go in there and touch stuff. <laughs> I couldn't buy it. I just go, I would go in there and touch it and play around with it. And now that I finally got some money, the place went out of business. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Sharp yeah, image no, no longer exists. No longer exists. No longer exists, yes. Uh, All right, so, so what you do, go ahead. So the other day, other day, man, I'm going through my archives. I'm looking, uh-huh. I'm looking for some video and photos of John Lewis and C.T. Vivian, and I come across some audio files, and why did I come across, I don't know why I even have it, an audio file of Reverend Adnoids. The vote of everybody, the <laughs> vote is everybody. These are today's church announcements. It's not nice to start the morning without saying, good morning, everybody. <laughs> The women who look like Al Green will meet in meeting room five. <laughs> Let me tell you where Reverend Adnoid came from. Right, where did that come from? It, when we would do the Tom Joyner show, Sybil would just say, she would say it in that voice, she would say, good morning. She would just say that. And she would just say, you know, like we said something funny, and she would say, like she said, Jay loves white women. Okay, yes, I do. And then she would go, <laughs> Good morning, everybody. But she said it in that Reverend Adnoid voice. And so I said, Sybil, can I take that voice and make a character with it? And she's like, yeah, go ahead and do what you want to do with it. So I took that voice where she was going, good morning. And she did it kind of like that, where it clicked off in my head. And I, that's how Reverend Adnoid was born, you know. And that character, man, you know, that was the character we would do on Monday. And he did church announcements, not church complaints, uh, what Tommy does on the Steve Harvey right, show. Right, right. He does, he does church announcements. So, yeah, that's where that character did, came from. Did, did you save all of those? Did you? I, I, mean, got a, I got a lot of them, and I have a book. I have a book. I've, 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 I've published, I know not as many books as you have, but I have uh, four, four books that I've published. One, the first book is uh, uh, the, uh, the announcements uh, by Reverend Adnoid. I also have um, 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 uh, the, the, the <laughs> Shades of Brown by J. Anthony Brown. Shades of Brown by J. Anthony Brown. And check this out. It's, it's the 50 Shades of Brown. It's just 50 Shades of Brown in the book. That's all that's in it. It's 50. 50 sh- it's 50. Roland, don't laugh. I'm serious. It's Fifty Shades of Brown by Jandy Brown. So you have a lot of people don't know. They're not brown. Is it has it has different levels? Oh uh, yeah, it does. And that, yeah, it has Fifty Shades of Brown by Jandy Brown. And I also have another book that I'm producing right now because 
I consider myself an artist. I have an, an art book coming out of all the hats that I drew. When I was doing the Tom Jordan show, I would doodle all the time. I just would draw. It looked like I would draw the same character. So the first book that comes out probably in the next six months is all these characters that I drew of just uh, these characters in hats. It's about 100 of those. And then I produced, and I went to Comic-Con twice. For those of you who don't know what Comic-Con is, Comic-Con is uh, a big convention that they have every year for people who are involved in the comic book area or superhero area. So I, pr I pr produced a character called Bitter Man. Bitter Man is a real superhero character who's totally against marriage. So I have a book. Of, I'm going to send you my stuff so next time I come on the show, you can hold it up and show everybody what I said. So I have those four books, and the art book will be the next book that I put, publish. Now, let me explain something to y'all. If that now, Jay, I told y'all Jay got gadgets. <laughs> gadgets. The only thing that comes second to Jay's gadgets is the amount of shit he sells. <laughs> Do y'all understand? Jay is so suits, hats, socks, hot sauce. Jay has art. I had some damn cuff links of some J. Anthony Brown art. Uh, Y'all done heard his books. He got a comedy club. I mean, well, the, the, the law, the rule of law is, uh, Roland, you know this, is you should try to produce seven streams of income. Oh, yes. You should not, you should not just. My minimum is five. My minimum is five. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's all you can probably keep up with. Sometimes you get, but you need to, you need to focus on at least five to seven streams of income so that when you grow older, you're not just, you know, depending on the money that you work with. You, you can sit back and you got, Maybe 400 coming here, or 200 coming here, or 300 coming here. That's what that's what to me it's all about. So that's why I'm always constantly dabbling in different things. But the hot sauce is doing really, really well. Uh, it's on hottertheamofo.com. <laughs> why you laughing, Roland? Why you laughing? Because the name is funny, hotter than a mofo. Now, the mofo stands for mother's food. What what do you think it stands for? Yeah, okay, mother's all right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Uh, mofo stands for mother's food. It stands for hotter than a mofo. I have habanero, peach and pepper, cayenne, garlic, and hotter than a mofo, which is very hot. And then rolling, I have nuts. So what I need you to do is try my nuts. Hello? Are you there? Rolling? I ain't trying your damn nuts. <laughs> I ain't trying your oh, damn nuts. Oh, you gonna be like that? You don't. You don't eat planters nuts. I don't eat. I don't eat planters. I can't stand. I can't stand walnuts. I can't stand cashews. I can't stand almonds. I just train my brain to like pecans. Damn it. I got. I got. I got pecans. Yeah. <laughs> pecans come up under nuts. I mean, come on. Don't be like that, Roland. Yeah. Don't be like that. No, I'm going I no, I, I will be like that. Uh I will be like that. First of all, I'm gonna go back to, to the Reverend Ad Noise. You talking about a book? That got that gotta be an audio book. Yes, I'm gonna make it an audio book. That would be cool. Thank you for giving me I'm, that. Yeah, now you got a new damn thing. Yeah, I'm telling you, that because I'm telling you, it was hilarious because the, the beauty of it, the evergreen. So it ain't like, you know, it's, it's right. It's right. It's definitely right. I'm telling you, right. I, 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 look, I I would buy it. No, actually, you had to send it to me for free. But uh, no, I, for free. but I, I, I'm telling you, I was sitting there and I was like, damn, I need to go find some more because it was just too funny. It was just it was absolutely too funny. All right. We, we, well, when did the whole singing thing with, with, with the, with the uh, what, what you call it, destroying a hit? Uh, murder the hits. Murder the hits. When did, where did that come from? Okay. Uh, let's see. Yolanda Starts, who uh, was Tom Jonah's producer, uh, I was performing at this club called Marriage Flat in Los Angeles. I was performing at the club Marriage Flat. And so at that particular time, Tom had all the people on his show who had a quote, quote unquote, real good set on Def Jam. Anybody who like just kind of stood out, that would be Bernie Mac, Steve Harvey, Adele Gibbons, some more, Ricky, um, uh, Ricky Harris, um, you know, all the people who set just kind of stood out. And mine was one of them because that's where I did the watch out there now. So they contacted me to be on Tom Jordan's show. I did the show just talking about comedy, yada, yada, kind of like we're doing right now. And then when I went off the air, I told uh, Tom, I said, hey, man, I'd like to come on your show 
and my dumb ass said, I'll be on there for free. That's what I said. That? Here's my, but listen, here's my, here's my analogy about that, behind that. Free gets you in the door. It right. really does. And a lot of people don't understand that. You kind of approach somebody sometimes and say, how can I help you to get your foot in the door? You want to be a barber? Offer to clean up the barber shop for free. You want to be a, a, a hairstylist? Offer to clean up the hairstyle for free or run errands for free. That gets you in the door. So free got me in the door. So I said, well, I want to be on every week. He said, well, I need another segment for Friday. What can you come up with? Come up with something that we can do every Friday. And at that time, I was working on KJLH, which is Stevie Wonder Station, where Rico Reed, uh, just uh, on Fridays, uh, you know, a couple days a week. And we had this segment called J. Anthony Brown Murders the Hits. And I said, well, I can do these sound parodies for you. And I said it again, Roland. I can give you a different one for free every week. <laughs> I said, I can come with a different song every week for free. That's how I got on the show, and that's what Murders the Hits. And since we've done them, I'm talking about 20 years, Roland. I must have 700 hits. Wow. Than that. Yeah, I've done, I think I've recorded more songs than some of these average singers. I, I think I have. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, it's, it look, it's all a part of look. It's about being able to do different things. I got a couple. Right. I got got a couple more questions for you. Uh, we had I had done this. I I did the Ebony Magazine comedy issue, and I uh -huh. asked you and a bunch of other people um, who was the funniest non comedian you knew. Uh, and oh, I, well, for, I forgot. That's I think was it a Taylor or somebody? Yeah. You like you yeah. said the, yeah. the, the tell everybody who, who this who this cat was. The funniest, there's several. The funniest non-comedic person in my life was my Aunt Emily, who was very quiet until she started to drink. <laughs> when she started to drink, you got a completely different show. And you could tell she was drunk because Roland, her tongue got heavy. And she would deny being drunk. She was my favorite aunt. She, she turned me on to cigarettes and beer. And she was uh, like that. And you're like, you know she drunk. And she said, Aunt Emily, you drunk? And I was like, what? You like, what are you talking about? But her tongue would be like it was lead. Like, like she couldn't talk. But what was so funny about it, she would curse our, 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 my grandmother. Because it, it, my grandmother was a matriarch of the family. And so everybody was afraid of her because she was the matriarch. But when my Aunt Emily got drunk, she lit up my grandmama's ass. I mean, she went in. Oh, yeah, she was like, everybody did it, did mama, man, damn, did mama, everybody did <laughs> And you couldn't laugh, you couldn't laugh, but she was one of the funniest people I know. My second funniest uh, was probably my, another one, it's three. Another one was a Kay Patterson, who was a history teacher, who really got me hip to Langston Hughes and poetry and stuff like that. But the absolute funniest was a guy that I worked for as a tailor. His name was Henry Taylor. His last name was Taylor. He owned the Taylor shop and he had the most successful business in Atlanta. But check this out, Roland. He hated customers. I'm one of Roland, when I tell you the man, customers, because his thinking was customers are in the way of what I'm doing right now. And it was like a customer, a customer would come in and he go, damn. I mean, I mean, he would just go off that like, damn, I ain't gonna finish this. He didn't make the connection when that was his that was his way of life was the customers. And he would say anything to them and hoping that they wouldn't come back. Because he had, <laughs> he had so much business. I mean, I worked for him for about maybe three or four years, but I remember him, some of the things he said to a customer. There was a large lady that came in that was getting a pair of pants fit, and he literally said, you need to keep your big ass still so I can mark these pants. Didn't care. He would mess up a product that like he would clean clothes. Like he, he shrunk a guy's suede jacket. And his, 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 his argument was, you shouldn't have brought it to me. <laughs> he said that to the customer. He was like, you shouldn't have brought it to me. But the classic was what he said to me. I had been working for him for about almost two years, Roland. Uh, and we never had a day off, meaning we worked six days a week. 
And I said, you know, uh, hey, man, I've been here quite a while. I wonder if I could have a day off. And he said, without missing a beat, he said, a day off? He said, nigga, when you came in here, you had them all off. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I went. I went back to my sewing machine and sat down, bro. <laughs> so Henry, uh, K. Patterson, and my aunt—probably the funniest people who are not comedians I know. You had yeah. them all off. You had them yeah. all off. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So now we, we, the last thing we, we gotta we gotta clarify something for people. All these uh -huh. all these people. There are a lot of people. They would come up to me, man. Man, uh, I wish Tom and Jay would leave you alone about your ascots. I, and I was in Nova Scotia, Canada, uh -huh. speaking at a yeah. business conference, and I put on the blue uh -huh. suit, the red tie. I walked down. They, the first question, yo, what ascot? And so I would explain to people. I said, y'all don't understand. <laughs> Tom and Jay be talking that trash on the air. But Jay has sent me several photos of his ass wearing a ascot. I said, y'all ain't never seen him post it. I said, so y'all need to understand that's a bit. I said, but both, I said, they ass is what I said, Jay wore ascot several times. But here's here's the thing that people don't know about uh, an ascot. Once you put on an ascot, it elevates your education right away. People <laughs> People, people assume you know more than you really know. So I've always taken to heart that if your ass is real dumb, put on an ascot. Now you got to keep your mouth shut, but when people see you, they will think you very smart. But put on, put on an ascot, and people will think you're very smart. Now the thing with you, Roland, you are very smart. So we have given you so much trash about not the ascot. I'm gonna let it go because it's you. Here's the one thing I didn't really pick up, and it you tried it. Bless your heart, you tried to make it catch on, and it what? just didn't. The feather pocket squares, it, it just didn't catch on. No, no, no. Here's the deal, though. Actually, no, no, so no. Actually, okay. here's the deal. It didn't catch on other people because I wasn't worried about other people. But actually, it did catch on because my sister actually makes those and gets orders every month. Oh, so, okay. so here's, I, I, I stand so here's, so here's, so I'm gonna tell you what really what what happened. First of all, uh -huh. the feather pocket square was a battle between me and Steve Harvey. We would have uh -huh. these pocket square battles at Essence every year. And then uh -huh. one year I said, I got some for your ass. Uh -huh. And I remember taking a photo and I had all the ascots and the linen suits laid out and the feather uh -huh. pocket squares. Man, when I got to New Orleans, he was like, Steve thought I'd actually stuffed some feathers in my pocket. <laughs> I was like, no, Steve, the, they were actually made. The pocket squares were made. <laughs> but the thing that was a trip, all these folks were like, Man, feather pocket squares, but Jay, the women loved it. They loved it. Bro, yeah. we, I'm at the White House. Okay. Christmas party. We in line. I got an ascot on. Uh -huh. A fuchsia ascot. I got uh -huh. the pocket square. Obama. They, they, they call your name, um, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Roland Martin. Obama goes, Roland, really? First the ascot, <laughs> now the feather pocket square. He goes, Really? Feathers. Now, mind you, Jay, why he talking, Michelle uh, Obama is over here playing with the feather pocket square. There you go. And I That's turn to him, and I go, win. hold up, win. I turn to him and I go, see, this ain't for you. <laughs> he was like, man, come on, take this photo. So that's the oh, deal. Man. Women it's love the feather pocket winner. square. It's a winner. It's a winner. Now, my last question to you. Are you using chicken feathers, or do you not ever use chicken feathers? Uh, no, chicken feathers are not being used. No. Well, you have it, it, in in as much chicken as we eat, Roland. <laughs> you're really you're really being disrespectful. <laughs> you, I mean, this is just my opinion. You're really being disrespectful of not using chicken feathers. Oh, well, I, I will let my sister know, and I'll keep that in mind. Okay, all I'll right. keep that in mind. Jay the Brown, always a pleasure. Yo, man, you got a cash app or anything? I got uh, my hot sauce. Go to hotterthanthemofo.com to check out my hot sauce. Please order some, and please check out our online show, 
hosted by my good friend, Mr. Ross Allen. It's called I Got a Gadget. Send us a gadget that you have. If we use it, we'll send you a T-shirt. Now, the sizes are only medium, uh, medium, large, extra large, and 3X. If your ass is bigger than that, <laughs> give it to a friend, okay? <laughs> give it to a friend or lose some damn weight. There you go. Thank you, man. Thank Dad, you. I appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Come back sometimes. Sometime. Yeah, Jay. I really want to talk politics. That's what I All right. Well, politics. well, just don't wait three damn months. All right. The election is less than 100 days. All right. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll do it. All right, Jay. Appreciate it. All right, y'all. All right, folks. Back to that my uncle's video in just one It's moment. time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it, please do because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.